I would like to give a very warm welcome to our Mount Zion Church family and to others who are watching our online service. Marilyn and I had a wonderful time in Ethiopia. We had three excellent seminars for pastors and leaders, and most of the delegates were very hungry, receptive, and really appreciated the teaching they received. Also many were wonderfully baptized in the Holy Spirit. Thanks so much for your prayers for us, which we were so conscious of, and the Lord really helped us in getting back home safely. This morning is Easter Sunday, and we will look at the greatest event in history, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. After Christ was crucified, his disciples were absolutely devastated. Their hopes and dreams were shattered and broken. Judas, Judas had betrayed Christ. Peter had denied him three times. The other disciples had fled. And it was a seemingly hopeless situation. But after three days, everything changed. Jesus rose from the grave, triumphing over death and hell. And shortly after, the disciples were filled with the resurrection power of Christ and were wonderfully used of God in a mighty revival. Firstly, we want to look at the resurrection declares who Jesus is. In Romans 1 and verse 3 and 4, concerning his son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Jesus was not just a good man, not just a prophet, not just a teacher, not just a miracle worker, but the divine Son of God. Thousands of people have been crucified like he was, but only Christ rose from the dead. The leaders of every other world religion, their bones are in the graves. But there is no grave with the bones of Jesus, because he is risen. In 1 Corinthians 15, which is a wonderful and comprehensive chapter uh, in the word of God about the resurrection. And when Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians, there was a heresy going round that there was no resurrection. And so Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 3 and 4, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So here first Paul established the fact that the resurrection is an essential part of the gospel. In verse 14 of the same chapter, And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching in vain, and your faith is also in vain. And Paul says his preaching is in vain, it is futile, it is useless, and their faith also is in vain if Christ was not resurrected from the dead. Christ was resurrected and had a new resurrection body. And at the second coming of Christ, those believers who qualify, they will arise to meet him in the air, also having glorious resurrection bodies. And Paul writes to the Thessalonians in chapter 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 16 and 17. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. One of the patriots in the word of, word of God is Job. Job lived more than 2,000 years before Christ was born. He was a godly, righteous, and upright man. Job, who suffered so much, he spoke prophetically of the second coming of 
Christ and also his own resurrection. In Job 19, uh, beginning at verse 25, we read, For I know that my Redeemer lives, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see for myself. This is an amazing revelation where Job says in verse 25 that Jesus will stand in the last days upon the earth. A triumphant statement of the personal return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And this is some 4,000 years before it will take place. Then Job states in verse 26, he says, In my flesh I shall see God. And although Job, he would be laid up in the grave, worms would destroy his body for more than 4,000 years, he knew there would come a day when he would stand and he, if he's standing, he's got to have a resurrected body in the very presence of the resurrected Lord. Secondly, we want to look at is that the second point is the resurrection of Christ defeated Satan, death, and hell. After his crucifixion, Jesus descended into the heart of the earth. And that is where hell is. It's in the very heart of the earth for three days and for three nights. Now, his physical body was in the tomb, yet his spirit was in the heart of the earth. After the fall of Adam, Satan had the keys of death and hell. While Jesus was in hell, he took the keys of death and of hell from Satan. And we find in Revelation 1 and verse 18, the words of Jesus, I am he that lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of hell and of death. In Bible times, a key was a symbol of authority. The keys were made of wood and were quite large and usually carried on the shoulders. And Christ has the power over death. Because Christ is risen, we no longer need to fear death. In fact, Paul, he writes to Timothy, and he says in 2 Timothy 1 and 7, For I have not given you a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and of love and of a sound mind. And It's a wonderful thing. It's a wonderful thing to know that when our lives are committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, we can have an assurance that that no one can touch us, no one can kill us unless God allows it. Many years ago, I was in the Philippines and I was on a a boat traveling from the south up up to the Manila and In this boat, there was a terrible typhoon, a terrible cyclone, and the boat was being tossed about, and people were screaming out, and there was a danger of us, us, the the boat uh, sinking at that time. And in the Philippines, others have been, other boats have sunk, many have been, many have lost their lives and have drowned. Uh, But it was wonderful, even in that experience, even when I was only young at that time. But I knew that God had a purpose for my life. I knew it was not yet fulfilled. And even in the midst of that danger, there was just like a a canopy or a, a tent came over me and just the wonderful peace of God. And with this coronavirus that's affecting us at this time, in fact, most of the the nations of the world are in shutdown because of it at this time. And there's fear in so many hearts and so many people. But when our lives are committed to Jesus, when we love the Lord Jesus, we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be fearful. Now, I recommend we be wise and we we take precautions. But 
Our trust is in the Lord. Our hope is in the Lord. Our protection is in the Lord. Our safety is in the Lord. We look to the Lord. And so nobody can touch us. We cannot die unless God allow it. And if for some reason God does allow it, well, the Bible says we go straight into the presence of the living God, which is far better. That's why the Apostle Paul could say in Philippians 1 and verse 21, he said, For me to live is Christ. But then he ended that verse, But to die is gain. To die is better. And so he could rejoice in every situation which he faced. In 1 John 3 and verse 8, we read these words. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. And Jesus destroyed the works of the devil through the cross, when he died on the cross, and when he gloriously rose again from the dead. But that word destroy, to destroy means not to annihilate, but to render inactive. All the power of Satan, his fallen angels, and, and all the demons could not hold Jesus in hell, but he rose victoriously from the dead. And the power of the resurrected Christ is so great that all the gates and strongholds of hell could not prevail against him. Thirdly, we, we, we look at God wants to manifest his resurrection power in our lives. And the resurrection was not just for the Lord Jesus Christ, but God wants us to know and to, and to experience his resurrection power in our lives personally. In Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 19 and 20, here Paul is writing to the Ephesians and he's praying for them that they would know this resurrection power. And what is the exceeding greatness of God's power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Because of the resurrection, there is greater power available to the church of Jesus Christ. And there is an absolutely incredible verse that Jesus spoke in John's Gospel 14 and verse 12. And Jesus said these words. He said that he that believes on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That is a, you know, incredible verse. You know, when we think of all the incredible miracles and the power of God that rested upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus is saying to his disciples, these things that, that I do and I have done, you will do. And you will do even greater things because I go to my Father. And he's speaking uh, of what God will do, especially in the last day revival, when the power, resurrection power, will come mightily upon his church. But even in the early church, you know, to a measure, they experienced the, the, the resurrection power of the Lord. And in some, in some areas, even great miracles and the power of God. In the life of Peter, God used him greatly. He experienced the power of God in, in, in incredible ways. In Acts chapter 5 and verse 15, people brought the sick into the streets, and even the shadow of Peter would heal them. In Acts chapter 9 and verse 40, Peter turned to Tabitha's dead body, and he said to her, he said, Tabitha, arise! She opened her eyes, and she sat up. Uh, just, he just spoke those words, and she arose from the dead. Again, the Apostle Paul, he saw outstanding miracles 
and many times experience that resurrection power of Christ. And the Apostle Paul, he writes in Philippians 3 and verse 10, and he prayed that he might know the Lord and the power of the resurrection of Christ in a greater way. He experienced many notable miracles, including the raising of the dead. One well-known man of God was Smith Wigglesworth. He lived last century. He was from England, and he was a simple man, but he loved God. He loved the Word of God, and he, he was continually, t continually feeding, reading the Word of God. And there are at least 14 documented occasions in his life where the dead were raised in his ministry. One was a five-year-old boy who had died, and he was called, Smith Wigglesworth was called to the home, and this little boy was in the coffin, a cloth was over his face. He asked the, the, the family to go out of the room. He locked the door, and then he lifted up the cloth, and he picked up the, the frame of the boy, the still frame of the, the young lad, and he held him in the corner of the room. And in the name of Jesus, he commanded death to go. And he commanded by the resurrection power of God to come upon the boy. And a mighty miracle happened. And as he prayed and rebuked death, God's resurrection power came upon him. And he was wonderfully raised again from the dead, and God's power was manifested. I had an experience many years ago when I was in the country of Papua New Guinea. I contacted malaria. It got worse. In fact, it turned, then I became unconscious. It turned to cerebral malaria. The, the last stages of cerebral malaria, had, malaria had gone to the brain. My friends, rushed me to the hospital, and as the, dom the doctors examined me, he said it was the last stages of cerebral malaria. And the doctor said that I probably only had a, had a few hours to live, you know, definitely less than one day. But my friends prayed, and they believed in the power of God. And they sought God, they prayed, they interceded, God spoke to them, and the Lord came down, and it was seven days later, the resurrection power of God came upon me, and God raised me up, and he completely, uh, completely healed me from every trace of that malaria. And, uh, you know, the doctors had said, well, you know, even if I did live, I'd be a permanent, uh, I'd have permanent brain dam damage and be like a ve vegetable the rest of my life. But others, you know, in fact, one, one person got the scripture from Psalm 119, that he shall not die, but live and declare the wonderful works of God. And so I know that I was raised by that resurrection, you know, power of Christ. And in the last day revival, you know, whole communities and even whole nations are going to be blanketed by the resurrection power of God. You know, some of you who are listening to this message this morning, you know, I sense that some here, some of you who are listening, you're going through difficult situations. You're going through maybe what you feel is hopeless situations. And, you know, so many where we're all confined, many, where many are confined, you know, to their, to their homes. And, you know, there's problems, there's difficulties. Maybe some have, you know, lost your jobs. Others have got major family problems that you're facing. Others are facing, you know, sickness. Others might be facing financial difficulties and all kinds of, of different problems. But nothing is too great for the Lord. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. And I want you to know Jesus, he loves you. Jesus cares for you. He cares about your problems, the situations you are facing. And he is not just a dead saviour, but he rose from the dead. He is a living God. He is a God of miracles. 
He is a God of the impossible. Nothing is too impossible for him. And oh, the greatest miracle too is, you know, when a person uh, repents of their sins and invites Christ into their hearts, he promises that he will come in, forgive their sins, and give them everlasting life. And I would just like to pr take this opportunity of, of praying now and praying that the Lord will come and the Lord will meet you where you are. He is risen. He is alive. We celebrate this morning, you know, the, the resurrection of Christ from the dead. And he wants us to know and experience that resurrection power of Christ in our lives. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this Easter Sunday morning. Lord, where we can gather together, even gather together online. Lord, to have the service and to hear your word. Lord, we thank you. Lord, that we can celebrate not only your death upon the cross, but we can celebrate this morning that you rose again from the dead, that you triumphed over Satan, over hell, over the powers of darkness. And Lord Jesus, we thank you that you not only triumphed yourself, but you, and you are alive today, but you can be alive in our hearts. And oh God, Lord Jesus, Lord, I pray, Lord, for people this morning. I pray, Lord, that you would come. Lord, that your anointing would come. And oh God, Lord, even as we reach out to you now, Lord, I pray, touch lives, Lord. Release healing, Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for those even in financial difficulties and problems, Lord. Lord, we look to you. Your name is Jehovah Jireh. I am the Lord, your provider. Oh God, provide for them, Lord. Touch them, oh God. Lord, those who are facing family issues. Lord, we pray that you would come, minister to them, touch them, Lord. Lord, give them keys, Lord Jesus. Lord, come through on their behalf, even in mighty ways. Oh God, Lord, we pray, oh God, that those who are, those who are depressed, those who are attempted to, 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 to violence and other ways, Lord. Oh, and the powers of the enemy. Lord, we pray that you would just give them breakthroughs. Give them breakthroughs, even over bondages that they may be facing. Oh, God, work, Lord, as only you can. And we believe, Lord, even as we pray together this morning, Lord, that you would manifest your mighty resurrection power in each of our lives. Lord, we ask these things in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We want to encourage you, especially in times like these, to keep your eyes on the Lord and to trust Him. May the Lord bless you richly. And remember, He is risen. He is risen indeed. We worship a living God who is faithful and true and well able to take care of us and do exceedingly above all that we could ask or think. We send all our love to our church family, and to all who are watching, we encourage you to join us again next Sunday morning. Have a blessed week.